welcome to section B, exercise 19 of What Can I Paint Next art course. Uh, in this one, we're moving on to SHIS, SHIS, the acronym for statement, hook, immersion, and subject. So your statement is what you've been doing so far in like, purpose, uh, why you're doing it, what are you trying to tell people, who are you saying it to, that sort of thing. That's going to be your statement. Then your hook is very much similar to how writers have a hook at the beginning of a story to get the reader's attention. And you, we, we can do this in many different ways. And what I'm going to do over the next three exercises is actually just concentrate on one hook in each one. So uh, you, you can split the hooks into materials, fundamentals and concept. Um, so in the first one, in the life we're going to be doing, or the figure drawing, we're going to be doing materials. And I'm just going to separate them out so that it's, it, it's easier to take it in uh, as each one. If you want, you don't need to use materials as the figure. If you sort of want to jump ahead to the next exercise and find out what I mean by fundamentals on exercise 21, what do I mean by using a concept as a hook? Read around these three exercises and see which ones you want to do and which direction you want to take it. Or you can do these three exercises, 19, 20 and 21, in order. The figure is going to be concentrating on materials as a hook. The still life is going to be concentrating on fundamentals as a hook. And then the landscape is going to be concentrating on concept as a hook. And if you don't mind doing that, you can carry on with us. So um, then you go on to immersion, I, immersion. The immersion is what's going to keep the reader's attention. Uh, the, exactly the same as you would in a story. You've got your hook. And then the immersion, how do you build the characters? How do you build the scene? How do you build what's going on? And we have that in a painting. You have one thing that draws people in. Then how do you keep their attention? Uh, is the hook just it? Is that it? Finished? Or once you look in, do, do they then see a little bit more? Um, I think paintings that have a little bit of immersion, even the smallest amount, tend to be more appealing to people. So I'm splitting the immersion again into materials, fundamentals and concept because it, you can use anything to, to immerse people. You can add detail, you can add ideas, you can have things hiding, you can um, juxtapose things that weren't expected. Uh, it's a surrealist dream, really. Brilliant. Uh, and then the last thing is subject. And the subject is very similar to what we did all the way through the course. What is in the painting? What are your nouns, verbs and adjectives? What are they doing? So uh, the subject will be the figure and what it's doing and the, the, the physical things that you can see in the picture. So that's Schiss. And with that explanation, I'm going to go on to my version. Um, this is my example. And I'm going to write it all down on my planning sheet. And here it is, exercise 19 planning sheet. So my statement for the painting I want to do is going to be, um, it's a Halloween painting showing a modern version of which I want to get away from wrinkly, old, gnarly type witch and this is going to be um, more of a vibrant, young, it's me actually, my face again, uh, it just keeps things simpler but in which costume that's going to be what I'm putting across in the statement is uh, Halloween, 
because we are coming up to Halloween. A modern witch. That's all I need to write. Don't need. You can really go into a lot of detail there. Really pour into it. Um, what you want to say, thoughts in your head. You can do a whole page just on the statement behind the, the painting. Uh, I'm just trying to keep it simple um, for the sake of moving on. But in, in sketchbooks, I can usually waffle on quite a bit about um, ideas behind things. The hook. The hook, in this case, is going to be materials. As I've said, you can do fundamentals or concept if you want, but with the explanation I'm going to be giving is going to be relating to materials as a hook. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to be using materials to describe different textures. Um, and it, it's, I'm going to be using layers and glazes and thickness and really using the texture of the paint to describe the texture of the materials. So materials um, using the paint to describe the clothing. That's going to be the hook. The immersion we've got the fundamentals it's going to be the textures once you they get the hook of oh what what's they done there you go in and you go oh look that's that material that's that material yeah so the immersion is textures and the other one i'm going to do is color um because the background's going to be um very dark hidden pumpkins so it's like an orangey brown background and then the figure itself is going to be all blues uh, and greys and purples so those two colours together uh, for some people it might swap over and it might be the colour combination that becomes a hook but my intentionally my intention is the acrylics and how I've used the acrylics is going to be the hook and then the immersion is the colours, the, what's in it, the pumpkins, the, all the different materials. So there is uh, my immersion. The subject, well as I've been explaining this, I've explained to you exactly what it is. So it's a figure dressed as a witch with pumpkins in the background. Now, from now on, I probably won't be separate. From now on, I probably won't be separating out place from subject, um, the background, where it is. That all becomes part of subject. What's in the painting? So that's my planning sheet done. Statement, hook, immersion, subject, shiss. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is just have a bit of a play with my materials, with the acrylics, just to um, have a go at playing, uh, just get it in those textures, see, see what sort of effects I, I can really push it to I have used it obviously I've used them before but I just want to refine and see where I'm going to go with it might throw in some gesso in there as well right so I'll see you in a bit and I'll carry on as I may have already mentioned um, I do have a quite a limited color palette I use ultramarine raw umber burnt sienna, cobalt blue, cadmium yellow, crimson, titanium white, sometimes a bit of magenta, and that's about it. Um, and I've had the opportunity to have a go with some other colours. Um, an extremely good friend and 
fellow artist um, bought me a couple of um, paints for my birthday so which was extremely nice of her so this is the ideal oppor opportunity to use them and it's that whole idea of materials this hook will be uh, the, 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 the actual colour of this one's going to stand out from the rest of my work because I'm trying different colours, new colours. So we'll see how it gets on. <laughs> Here we have the finished painting for exercise 19. Um, I think in the end I, I, the hook seems to be more the blue on the orange rather than the materials. I really did try and use the acrylics in a way to draw people in um, but I suppose as long as you get something that's fine. Um, so in this one, the statement was going to be um, a Halloween witchy painting that wasn't a, like a hag. That's all I wanted to do. The uh, hook was the using acrylic materials in a different way to get people to look closer. The immersion was the colours, the pumpkins in the background and the textures and um, all the smaller details and the subject was a portrait of myself in a big witch's hat uh, with pumpkins in the background so a nice simple one um, the shiss exercises are quite simple but I think um, you, unless it's put to you that you're actually trying to think of a hook to get people to look at it you may be doing it already but not consciously so that that's why i've included this one really so in exercise 20 it's going to be shiss for still life so statement hook immersion and subject for a still life 
Right, so thanks very much and I'll see you in the next one.